Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Friday, the 24th of January, 2020. Stardate, uh, the first episode, here in the UK at least, of Star Trek Picard released on Amazon Prime, which I am subscribed to. And I have now watched it. Twice. Is that a good sign or is that a bad sign, As? <laughs> okay, well, first things first. Look, I, I did have a major concern about this series. And it wasn't Patrick Stewart. And it wasn't, obviously, the Star Trek The Next Generation franchise. The thing that I was most concerned about was two words. Alex Kurtzman. When he's attached to a project, you should get worried. He doesn't have a good track record. And he's the person behind the... The absolutely abysmal discovery and also the reinvention, which kind of fell pretty flat. So, when Alex Kurtzman is attached to a project, uh, be afraid, be very afraid to coin another franchise. With that said, for a first episode, I thought this was very good indeed. Very good indeed. There are a couple of things which I thought were a bit clunky here and there. That's fine. That's fine. And I do have something that I'd like to discuss at the end of the video as regards to uh, a little fear that I have going forward. But we'll, we'll get to that later. So with that said, let's get into the episode and I'll go through my thoughts and my feelings. My feels! Ah, just like a feel for Jerusalem. Uh, as we go through the vid. So we start off with a, a, a gorgeous shot of space, a nebula and uh, stars and ting. And then we have, oh my god, the most beautiful sweeping shot of the Enterprise D. Oh god, I love me some Ds, ladies. The Enterprise D is, it's my ship. This is my Enterprise. You know, yeah, sure, the Enterprise... The original Enterprise, I know it's iconic and all that kind of stuff. And it is a beautiful looking ship. But to me, a kid, a young boy, watching Star Trek The Next Generation in 1997 was just blown away by this. This beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery. And uh, they just did it the just incredible justice. I'll just pull back a little bit. Oh. Just incredible justice. I know, sorry to gush, but this is this is an awesome, an awesome, awesome shot. Now, it also starts with the song, Blue Skies Waiting For Me, which I'm pretty sure, I'm not going to check, I'm going to go out on a limb here because I'm 99% sure I'm correct here, was the song that Commander Data sang at Troy and Riker's wedding. God, if I've got that wrong, I'm going to look like such a douche. Uh, but I think that's correct. So, you hear Blue Skies, you see the Enterprise, my initial thought goes to Data. And I'm not disappointed. As it, uh, the camera moves itself to 10 forward, and we have uh, Picard and Data playing poker together. Now, some people I've have heard have, have criticized the uh, the look of data, the, the makeup of data. Personally, I think it's fantastic. Considering Brent Spiner is 67, 68 years old, I think it's absolutely incredible. So I've got no issue. And I, I just want to say this, folks. If anyone, if anyone does a review and says, well, actually, Commander Data shouldn't be in this costume because this costume arrived after the Enterprise D was destroyed at the end of Generations. It was the Enterprise E that brought this. If anyone does that, just leave. Leave the video. Never go back to that channel again. It's a dream. It's allowed to have artistic license. This was... The uniform that Data wore when he died. So that's the way that I personally view this. It's metaphorical. It's because Picard says during this poker game when Data forces Picard to either fold or go, go all in. That's when Picard says, I don't want the game to end. 
And moreover, I think it's, I don't want you to end. I don't want you to die, Data. Because he knows that Data sacrificed himself at the end of Nemesis to save Picard. So that's what I think all that sort of stuff is about. So if anyone whinges about the uniform, leave. Stick a dislike. <laughs> but um, they arrive... Or he looks out the window and suddenly realises he's uh, by March. And there's a beautiful, by the by March, by Mars, there's a beautiful conversation, can I just say, going on between these two. Data purposely, during the poker game, dilates his left pupil, which is a tell in poker. But Picard, because he's an intellectual, I just want to make one thing personally clear. I'm, I'm on the red letter media wagon here when uh i say i don't class the movies i know they are but i personally don't class the movies as canon because the picard from this tv series and the picard from the movies are very different picards picard from the series is an intellectual the picard in the movies is a warmonger <laughs> so i personally don't like to think of the movies as canon so Picard is very much like the Next Generation series Picard here because he deduces that Data is incapable of having a tell because he's you know, a perfect android or as near to perfect android as you can get. So the tell must be in an attempt to make Picard think he's showing a tell <laughs> and therefore trying to put Picard off to say that he's bluffing. So Picard says, so when you don't dilate your pupils, that's when I know you're bluffing. So it's, it's a lovely little conversation between the two, and it did, it was very reminiscent of the next generation. I, I'm gonna, when I say the next generation, I am referring to the actual TV series. So he delays and delays, because as I said, he doesn't, I don't want the game to end. Patrick Stewart, you beautiful man. And then, uh, because this is a dream sequence, they realise that they're, uh, they've actually pulled up against Mars. And then Mars starts to explode, and then the Enterprise explodes with Picard in it. He wakes up in his bed in France. There we go. Picardy in bed. Picardy and Coke. <sighs> Bet that's a lovely drink. Uh, so he gets up and he, he looks outside, and we, we have this uh, beautiful Californian... Par France. <laughs> this is this is uh, France, California. <laughs> Lots of vineyards, of course, in California, uh, but they're they're saying it's France and it's Chateau Picard, uh, as he had in the series, of course. Then we get to this little lady here, who's called Daj, and she's with a boyfriend, and they're getting all smoochy smoochy uh, because she's been um, awarded a position at the Daystrom. Institute mentioned many times in Star Trek, and then uh, while her boyfriend fixes her a drink, some people just teleport in, and boyfriend's gone. Gets a knife right through the heart. See you later, sunshine. He's gone. Now they start asking her a load of questions. She hasn't got a clue what's going on, and then one of them says she hasn't she hasn't activated yet. And then they stick a bag over her head and try and knock her out. But when they do that. Then she activates and she starts kicking all of their ass. It's a very slick fight scene. Very well put together. I liked the gymnastic martial arts. It seemed very UFC as opposed to nonsense. You know, fantasy nonsense. It, it felt very UFC. Lots of grapples. Lots of pull downs. Um, and then pew, pew, pew. They all get shot. And you'll notice on the window, it's green blood. Is it Vulcan? No, it is Romulan blood. As Romulan ale. Uh, then she's like freaking out because the boyfriend's dead. And uh, yep, yeah, he's not coming back. And then she sees a vision of Picard in her head. What is going on? I hear you cry. Interesting stuff. We then get the credits. Uh, the theme tune can grow on me. Uh, and then at the end, it has a little twang of next generation. It is the only thing I will say that did slightly worry me about the credits is it was like starring Patrick Stewart, 
starring the lady who plays Daj, guest starring Brent Spiner as command as Data, and then it literally was producer, 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 producer. It's like Discovery. It just produces everywhere. So, he's wandering around his uh, vineyard with his doge, which is called number one. Of course it is. And he's got a pheasant in his mouth and he's speaking French to his doggy. And then we've got two farmhands, which I... Uh, yeah, farmhands, we'll call them farmhands. And uh, which I did like. A couple of Romulans, who we discover later are refugees from Romulus that Picard helped to save. And they are both very good. Uh, the act, the actors are very good indeed, and I really felt, and this is so important in what I've been talking about recently with things like Doctor Who and whatnot, I felt immediate chemistry between these three. It felt like they were um, friends, it felt like uh, they, they did have a bond between them, and it was instant. Instant. And I liked that a lot. I liked it a lot. Didn't feel fake or forced or anything. Very natural when they're with each other. Enjoyed it a lot. Gets himself a tea, Earl Grey. No, 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 no. Tea, Earl Grey, decaf. He's getting on. Kind of that caffeine pumping through your veins at 79 years of age. So, anyway, he's going to uh, appear in an interview because it's been... Uh, 15 years or so since the supernova destroyed Romulus. And he is informed that they are not going to ask him questions as regards to why he left Starfleet. As regards to the character names, I don't know them at the moment. I have to watch it um, some more for me to get familiar with them. I'm sorry. But again, they're all very... You can tell there's a massive warmth with them towards Picard. Because he led the Armada, which saved a lot of people, even though Starfleet, as we're going to soon discover, let them down. There is a lovely scene here, which I really, really enjoyed. As the news crew are setting themselves up, the, um, the actual interviewer, this lady here, she has this, like, screen in front of her, and they're waving like a wand over her lips, and it's changing the lipstick colour. And it's so subtle, but it's so good. And I thought, I, I really did like that. I just thought, li those little technologies you can see. You can potentially see, yeah, I don't like that colour. So instead of reapplying, taking it off, putting on a new one. Just this sort of wand which goes through so you can see exactly what it's going to look like. It was good. I liked it. Now, you can, ha you can have an opinion about her in as much as you can say she's either being a bitch or she's being... Uh, and invest, you know, really kind of like pushing the envelope of, of reporting. So you can take it take it either way. But she pushes and pushes Picard about Romulus. And we, we discover that during the evacua uh, evacuation of Romulus, uh, the synthetics, which are, are androids like Data, and it seems that, again, we discover later on, it seems that these synthet synthetics probably made by Brad Maddox... Now, if you don't know who Maddox is, as soon as I heard that name, I was like, oh, wow. Because he's the guy um, in the episode that he wants to take Data away and study him. And we have this incredible, uh, almost like court scene where Picard is fighting for Data's life. He's fighting uh, to say that Data is a sentient being. And it's one of the the best episodes of, of uh, The Next Generation, Brad Maddox is the guy who wants to do that. And, and it's it's a really, really good episode. So to hear him being mentioned, I was like, okay. But when they were evacuating or starting the evacuation process of Romulus, the synthetics, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry to say this, hacked. Because <laughs> ah! everything is just... Hacked, 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 it's just such a, such an easy thing to do. Hacky, hacky, hacky. They hacked the defense grid of um, Thingamajig, Planitia, Nova, Planitia, whatever. The, um, the shipyards and Mars, and they destroyed them. The synthetics destroyed them. 
And apparently to this day, Mars is still burning. So after that happened, synthetics became outlawed. Which uh, Picard says he massively disagrees with. And then, because of what happened, the Federation called off the evacuation of Romulus. So it looked like a lot of Romulans died in the supernova. So Picard uh, gets pushed on why he left Starfleet. And he said, because it wasn't Starfleet. It wasn't Starfleet anymore. And then um, she tries to liken the Armada as as, uh, a feat that was so grand. It was like the creation of the pyramids. And and Picard is, again, the TNG Picard. He says, no, the pyramids were a vanity. They were were an ostentatious show of vanity. The uh, evacuation of Romulus was more akin to Dunkirk. And the the news lady clearly doesn't, recall Dunkirk you know time too much time has gone by and doesn't recall Dunkirk and uh so just very good interview you know I liked the way that she was pushing him and I liked the way that you know you could take her as certainly the aggressor and the responses which Picard was giving back it's a good scene it's a really good scene and he ends up walking out on it uh because he was told that he wasn't going to get pushed about why he left Starfleet, which was, I believe, at the same time, so 15 years ago. Um, They're watching in, by the way, so they're sort of like, you know, recalling the memories. So Daj is walking down the street. She's from, (coughs) it's not New Boston, what was it? Like Greater Boston or something. You did have a sweeping shot of the city and it looked incredible. It looked absolutely incredible. It looked... Modern contemporary, if you know where I'm coming from. Yeah, it, it didn't look like uh, Coruscant, for instance. You know, it didn't look like uh, it is definitely massive sci-fi. You saw it and you thought, oh yeah, this is uh, this could easily be Boston, but X amount of time, 100 years in the future, whatever, even though this is you know, much more. But you know what I mean? So it did have a, a good sense of grounding and reality. There's even shots of Paris. Well, you see the Eiffel Tower and you see a lot of like modern technology and buildings now. But then it does go to like the old Parisian. You still have the old Parisian buildings around the place. So again, modern contemporary. I did like it. Lots to like about this. And she sees Picard. And of course, it's daylight there because it's uh, it's morning in France. And it must be like very late 4 a.m., 5 a.m. or whatever. Uh, 3 a.m. Something like that over in uh, United States of America, Shire. Uh, so it's dark there. So they got the time zones kind of pretty much right. So she sees Picard and she knows where to go. And uh, then we have Picard just enjoying himself a glass of wine, maybe some jazz. Chilling out with number one, the Doge, which is just gorgeous. And then she turns up at the vineyard. And she's like, do you know who I am? I, 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 I don't know why, but I was kind of like compelled to come here. And I just know that I'll be safe with you. And he's just like, no, but, you know, you know, he's like looking at her familiar. There's something. He knows there's something there. So they take her inside and they, uh, she tells them a story that she was attacked with a boyfriend. Her boyfriend was killed. She killed the three people that, that attacked them and she's just run. And then she gets taken inside. They fix her up with a zappy zappy on her head wound. If you're wondering how she got there, most likely some sort of transporter. You know, it's it's, e- it's easy in those days to get all over the planet. And uh, they have a little chit chat, and then he asks about her necklace, and uh, you know, just there's just little things which appear to to kind of like trigger him. He knows there's something about her as well, but he can't put his finger on what it is. So they uh, retire for the night. And uh, Picard wakes up, and we think initially it is a, a regular wake up, but he actually is back in a dream again. He's dreaming. And he dreams of Data painting a picture. And he is back in his captain's uniform from the original TNG. So we have both Data and Picard on the sh- screen again together in the TNG outfits. There's a lump in my throat. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
So uh, Data is, has this picture of a, a girl and he says, would you like to finish it? And Picard's just like, I, I don't know how to. And you see that the face is missing, you know, not missing. It's, uh, it's to be determined. And he's like, I don't know how to finish it. And Data's like, yes, you do, sir. Yes, you do, sir. So Picard wakes up at his desk. He's fallen asleep at his desk. And he turns behind him, and lo and behold, bang! The picture that Data was painting in his dream. But this is one where the uh, featured person in it has their face away, so we can't see it. And he realises that this is a from a set of two that Commander Data painted for him. So, he heads out to archives... And we have this AI construct here. It's it's VR, you know, it's not corporeal. And uh, it's trying to, it has a little joke, and he's, Picard's just like, there's not a joke, and they're like, we're trying to introduce, I hope, I wish they'd said subroutines. I don't know, maybe they did. You know, we're trying to introduce a little bit of humour into the programming. I would have preferred subroutines. Subroutines is very much TNG. So he has a, a like a little vault of of his stuff, and uh, look, there's going to be some some Star Trek fans out there which are way more um, up on it than myself. I'm gonna take a couple of punts at things. I'm gonna reckon that's the Stargazer. That's what I'm gonna take a punt at, and then um, when he goes in, you see a a, a larger shot, a Batlith. Maybe from Worf, maybe when he was the, you know, um, Klingon emissary books, not sure on. There is, I believe, the, uh, is that Voyager? No, can't be Voyager. No, it's not Voyager, silly boy. There he's got his Captain Picard Day banner up as well, which I remember that Captain Picard Day episode. That was pretty, pretty good. Um, that's the captain's yacht, I think. Is that the captain's yacht? I don't know. And then that, here, I think this is the, uh, thing. This is the, I can't remember what it's called, it's got a really weird name. But I think this is the archaeological gift that he was given from his former teacher, I think. He, he, he seemed kind of like thrown it to one side in generations as he picks up a um a photo album of his his family but this is meant this is i think it is that but there's some other stuff so i'm not too sure i think that's again i think that's the stargazer captain picard day okay these are great by the way can i get me some of these uh models they're great so he finds the picture and he opens it up and lo and behold boom the face is the face of the girl. Oh, yes. So he calls for the AI to materialize again. And he said, what was the name of this painting? And she says, it was called Daughter. Painted by Data, called Daughter. So Picard's just like, oh, my God. Data created another daughter. That's what he believes at this moment in time. So, the girl herself has gone AWOL because she believes that um, her staying with Picard is actually going to bring him more trouble. This is the shot of Paris. We've got the Tour Eiffel. And then we have the, the modern structures. But you can see just down here, it's old Parisian buildings... I like it. I like it a lot. It's got a great aesthetic to it. So she calls her mum. She's just like, oh, I, 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 I got a load of crap going on. What should I do? Her mum says, you need to go back to, to Picard. And she says, well, how would you know I was at Picard? I, I never told you. She's like, uh, of course you did. But even though she's clearly knows something that the girl doesn't, this to me says a couple of things. Number one, she's a good guy. Number two, I think she's AI. 
I don't think that's her mother at all. I think it's an image, but I think it's AI meant to give the illusion of her mother because the girl at the end of the day is actually synthetic. She's not human. She's synthetic. So I think this is the illusion of motherhood. So she has these memories in a positronic net which make her think she's had these dealings with her mother, but they're not. So I think that's AI. But she's like, you need to get back to Picard. Now. Pronto. He can, he, he'll be, he can help you and you'll be safe. So Picard is leaving the archives and meets back up with Daj. She's called Daj. We have um, a kind of old, a, a mixture in the uniforms, the Starfleet uniforms. They're kind of like the Voyager ones-ish. Um, which were my least favourite <laughs> out of all of them, but okay. So Picard starts to explain to her what he believes her to be, and uh, she's just like, "So I'm, I'm a, I'm a no, you know, I'm a freak. I'm a no." He's like, "No, no, 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 no." You know, Data was a, a, an incredible person, a, a person of integrity, a person of courage, brave. Um, you know, you if you are who I think you are, then you're unbelievably precious to me and, and I will never leave you and I, I will, you know, be with your side always. And it's a lovely little moment between the two. Then she realises that uh, some people are, are on the way to get to them. So we have this quite amusing uh, running scene in as much as he's 79 years old, nearly 80 years old. He can't, he can't do what he used to do. He can't run around everywhere anymore so he's just like you know I, sh I can't do this just leave me she's like no 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 she, she grabs him and then they start attacking and then again she just kicks into her programming and starts kicking the the crap out of them now this is and he realizes one one of the helmets come off the guy and he realizes they're uh, romulans now this is where something happened which i was not happy with one of them kind of spits out like either an acid or an expl explosive device, something like that, at her, which obviously starts to burn her skin. They die because of it, but it looks like, you know, they're on a mission, they're on a mission. One way or no way type of thing. And it uh, affects the, the uh, gun, the rifle that she was holding, and, and it causes it to explode, and it kills her. It kills her. Now, I was a little bit miffed about that because, and Picard gets blasted back as well, I was a little bit miffed, right? Not like, but just a little bit miffed because I thought the show did a really good job of introducing her. I thought it did a really good job of introducing her and I liked the way that she was very, you know, calm, just like a regular person at the beginning and then suddenly her life gets turned upside down and there was a great sense of vulnerability about her. And I was like, I am interested in, in knowing more about this character. Boom. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> so she gets bloated uppy. And Picard gets knocked back. And then the next thing he knows, he's having some flashbacks. And then wakes up back in Chateau Picard with his two uh, comrades. And he's just like, Daj, Daj is dead. And they're just like, well, uh, she wasn't on the... Um, computer scans so the police scans so maybe she had some sort of personal cloaking device that activated when she was under attack uh, who knows and he's he's just like i let her down he said i've been s sitting away here at chateau picard just waiting to die and i've let i've let her down so he's just he, he decides he's going to get a bit proactive and find out what what the earth's going on here so we've got a lovely little mystery now what is going on here so he goes to the Daystrom Institute, where we meet up with uh, Alison Pill, who's going to be one of the uh, main cast. And she's one of the uh, doctors there. And he's just like, can you create a synthetic out of tissue and blood? And she's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just like, no, seriously. He's like, oh, really? He's like, well, it was a possibility, um, but it never happened. This is where we find out about Maddox. And he said, Maddox was working on it. Why? And he said, because I've just had lunch with one of them. <laughs> I just had tea with one of them at my chateau. 
So she's just like, oh man, I really wish you'd come on my day off. So she takes him into the, the research lab, which is just now empty because um, the creation of synthetics is now outlawed in a, in a galactic treaty. And so what is the point in researching them? So we discover B4. B4 is here in the uh, Daystrom Institute. And we, d we find out that, yeah, Data transferred his, his um, you know, his files, basically, into B4. But they didn't take. They didn't take because B4 was just too inferior. And so most of the data was actually lost. Uh, but there was a fragment here or there. And, and Maddox had used a fragment to create the girls. Because the necklace that she's wearing had two circles intertwined. And that's because Maddox created them as pairs, as twins. So one of them is destroyed. But it means there is another one out there. Uh, which we soon find. We get a Romulan vessel coming through various uh, force fields. This is the Romulan reclamation site. Very tight shots of this. I really wish they hadn't shown too much in the trailers because this would have been a very interesting reveal at the end. But uh, we all know what this is. <laughs> it's a Borg cube. So we see the second one. and She's uh, a researcher here or a doctor here or something. She's something here. She meets up with this Brit. This Romulan Brit, who's uh, clearly going to be like a Ramsey Bolton type of psycho, <laughs> by the looks of it. And uh, he kind of does a bit of schmoozing with her, and she tells her about her sister. You can tell he knows what's going on. And then we it pans out and pans out and pans out, and then it's Borg Cube. So what are the Romulans doing with a Borg Cube? Hmm. So I thought there was some, some great mystery set up in this episode. I know I've waffled on for a bit. I love Star Trek and I really wanted to get into this one. Uh, so there's a great little mystery that's been set up. Uh, my concern that I, I, I mentioned at the beginning, that I, I said I'd discuss at the end. My concern is, as Elvis Presley would kind of say... I'd like a little more conversation, a little less action, please. Not the other way around. Because um, if you see another version of this, they have a to come in this series. And there is a load of pew, 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 ADHD shit going on. And it's just like, this show has been really good. This, because it's had a lot of building character building world building a lot of conversations it felt very much like a tng than it did a bloody jar jar abraham's <laughs> nonsense so i i hope that the the action is sparing and they don't suddenly fall into the trap of now he's on the spaceship the spaceship's got to the blowy up things and but we'll see <clears throat> but the first episode was was very, very good indeed. If you're not subscribed to Amazon Prime, I would highly advise that you do and watch this. It was very, very good to watch. So I have waffled on for a long time. So I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live strumming links. In the description box down below and i'll be back with some more stuff very soon you take care bye for now